Hey, how you doing? This is Steven Burkhart with Nomad Productions, and I'm here to give you the last uh, tutorial for editing your photos from camera to your website. And the first two episodes, I ended up showing you how to edit photos in Preview, and the second one showed you how to edit photos in Photoshop. And really by editing, I mean uh, cropping to be able to have them in the right sizing for your website, which to be honest is at least, you know, outside of shooting the picture is half the battle. Um, that's extremely important. The, the last thing I'm going to show you is just some basic color correction and just kind of fixing uh, the pictures that you have done so far. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, we're going to open up iPhoto which I've already done. Going to import to library. And I just got to where I am here by going to desktop, going to our file that we had made in the very first video on file management. Nomad Productions, which is my company. Going to my photos, going to test for video. We're gonna to go to the final since we had edited one uh, as a square. I'm gonna to go to bushes, bush dem square. And thankfully, now that we've gone back and it's been a couple days for me since I've looked at these, it's nice um, to kind of go back to the file management on uh, naming this properly when we exported it and we ended up resizing it and put the word square in here. So I absolutely know that this one is absolutely a square and I don't have to guess and try to flip between these two to find out. So let's go ahead and click import. Excellent. Go ahead and click on the picture, go down here and click edit. Here we have a photo. And we're going to click adjust. Drag this to the left side here. All right, so we have a couple of adjustments here. And some of these are self explanatory, some of these are not. We're going to go up to the very top here, go to exposure. I think the exposure on this one is pretty good. Maybe it just needs to be a little brighter. Um, so we're going to drag that to the right, and as you see, this picture is literally just getting brighter. Um, for this kind of picture, you'll notice at the top here, we have a graph, and it is, from left to right, it's, it's darkest to lightest. And so as you can see, there's absolutely no shadows in this picture. We can see a little darkness up here in the top right corner, but as far as the graph is concerned, there is really nothing in the shadows, and that's fine. Uh, to be honest, that's really good for product photos, depending on what you're shooting, because you want to have the light sort of, you know, surrounding the object, making it look all delightful and ready to purchase. So we've adjusted it so it's a little bit brighter, kind of like that. Now, one thing, there's two really adjustments that you're going to have to fix based on how you shot the picture. Uh, let me go ahead and purposely mess this up a little bit. So let's say we shot it, and it kind of looked like this. We notice it's a little bluish, um, but we wouldn't necessarily know what was wrong with it. This would be a problem if you ended up shooting your picture. Um, this picture, for example, is done outside, and if we had shot it with uh, the white balance at, say, an indoor, indoor shot, it would end up coming out really blue like this, because what it's doing is adjusting for what essentially is orange lighting inside of a house, and so it's actually making your photo more blue, and then when you go outside where the light is blue from the sun, it will get a super blue object, just like you're seeing right here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to temperature, and, and on the left-hand side, you've got your bluer image, and your right-hand side, you got your oranger image. Now, temperature is measured in Kelvin, and that is really not important here. All that you need to know is that 99% of the time, Cooler temperatures or bluer colors are going to be on your left hand side and hotter temperatures um, are going to be on your right hand side. All right, so for this picture, we're just going to go ahead and let's just try, we're just going to go ahead and drag this until we think that the colors look natural. Now yeah, that looks a little too orange. Be honest I kind of like it right about there and that is because I tend to like a little warmer looking pictures 
I think warmer looks a little more approachable if we had to choose a word for it and just looks a lot more comforting is you can imagine if you go into someone's home um, there's you know a lot of like dark furnitures and orange lighting it feels very what you describe as homey and so I I kind of like that feeling in my pictures as well the other thing you may have to mess with a little bit is a thing called tint obviously in iPhoto it's pretty uh, straightforward you've got you know a sort of magenta pink color over here and green on this side and then you can kind of adjust your picture as you need to if you shoot a picture outside on like grass you're gonna find that that grass that green from that grass is going to reflect on people's faces and the product you're on especially if you're shooting something a product that's white you're gonna to want to make sure it looks white and so you're gonna go ahead and go through there and say you're shooting in grass and you notice oh people's faces are a little green or your, your product is looking a little green you can just move that adjustment more towards the pink side to take out that color and say for example you're shooting a picture and the hues look a little like pinkish um, a little reddish you can move that bar over to the right a little bit and put some green back into it and get the colors looking a lot more natural I would say the only other thing that I'll talk about um, is this little guy right here it's a little eyedropper and you can just kind of pick a place to click on it that's kind of free of the color you're trying to get. Um, and so I kind of picked over here in this corner, and that changed some of my settings so that it color balanced it to its own opinion of what it should look like. Uh, like I said, this is this is actually pretty good. Um, I like it a little bit warmer looking, so I'm going to move that over a little more orangey. Now, if you really want to get super serious about the color balance of your photos, one thing I would suggest is to get a color balanced whiteboard, or at the very least, get like a uh, like the big posters you can get um, that you can you know like kind of back when you did uh, projects for school, and you could like paste pictures on there and draw on it and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, for a, like a presentation you just get one of those whiteboards and then take a picture of that and then take a picture of all the, your product photos after that and if you go and uh, let's go back to this just here what this is doing is looking for a white point in the picture and so obviously there is no white in this picture there's just areas that I thought over here looked a little more plain looking so that it could adjust based on that setting and so um, if you end up taking a picture of the whiteboard, what you can actually do is you'd be able to click and then you'd be able to look at all these numbers right here. So you look and you say, okay, I've got an adjustment of uh, an iPhoto of 4.6 and a 3.4. So now you can go through all your other pictures and, you know, go and move the cursor over till it's around 4.6. Move this one over till it's about 3.4. And what you're going to have is a real consistency between all your pictures, and they're all and they're also going to be much more correct because you actually changed the colors of the picture to be changed to white rather than a whiteish portion of the picture, and so it's just going to be a lot more accurate. And like I said, if you're shooting uh, multiple products uh, that each have you know a different set of colors, and maybe there's no white in them or whatever else you're going to have a lot more consist consistency across the board because you had a reference to go off of. So hopefully this is helpful to you and gets you much better colors in your product photos. And certainly this can't totally make up for bad lighting or poor placement, but what it can do is if you have those other things figured out, is be able to get really good, true, rich colors for your uh, products and especially if you're selling a product that has to be a certain color and that has to be ac uh, represented accurately, this is really going to make the difference.